This conference will now be recorded. Okay, okay. Well, folks, thank you and welcome to the Vonage UCAS 101, uh, uh, named the Complete Communication Platform. Obviously, we've been doing a few 101s on UCAS with different providers and their different offerings. Uh, so very pleased to have Scarlett Harris with me today, as well as Charlie Mervis, uh, both from Vonage, um, who are our support folks, our direct support folks uh, and dedicated support folks over at Vonage. Um, we're going to be uh, focusing really on UCAS today. Uh, obviously, Vonage does have other offerings, in, including a, a very uh, neat contact center uh, capability, and they've also got like a uh, application uh, programming uh, interface thing, which they'll touch on real briefly. But the real focus is going to be on unified communication. So, um, so that's that's that. Um, let me get started. So today's agenda. First of all, uh, for those who haven't been on previous, we're going to like uh, previous uh, calls. We're going to quickly touch on defining what UCAS is, provide some insight into the adoption and the drivers of that adoption. We'll also be introducing USA Voice and Data and why we're the UCAS experts. Um, and then we'll be introducing Vonage. After that, um, the Vonage team are going to be running through their communication platform solutions, giving the background on Vonage itself and how it's uh, how it's uh, grown and grown. Um, we'll be digging into their different applications, and then um, we'll actually see a live de demo of their VBC, they call it, the Vonage Business Communication Application, and how it differentiates itself from some of the other competing UCAS uh, solutions out there. Um, after the demo, we'll be uh, wrapping up with a quick uh, overview of key solution takeaways, and we'll be touching on how to get started. If you're just getting started with your UCAS option, uh, evaluating your UCAS options, uh, we'll give you uh, a few hints on uh, uh, best path forwards for, for kicking those evaluations off. Um, we would love this to be interactive, so uh, any questions that Come to the come to the front of your mind uh, when you're uh, uh, as we walk through these slides and and the demo. Uh, we'd absolutely encourage you to just throw them out there. Um, and obviously, if there's something that we can't answer immediately, we'll follow up with you afterwards um, after the demo is over. So, what is UCAS? Um, it's really a cloud delivery model providing a variety of communication and collaboration applications and services. So obviously the the uh, first and foremost telephony um, secondly presence the ability to see what your colleagues are up to are they on the phone uh, would it be a waste of time me picking up the phone and calling my partner Ross or is uh, or is he available right now um, has he stepped away from his desk is he in a meeting so on and so forth uh, messaging um, obviously we all use SMS met messaging um, uh, on our smartphones and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, uh, the UCAS, most UCAS solutions are gonna have uh, a sort of corporate messaging uh, solution, um, a non-SMS messaging. I think what makes uh, the uh, Vonage platform particularly powerful, um, they have a very integrated uh, SMS capability and you'll be seeing that later on. Um, team collaboration, obviously things like um, webinars and uh, video calling and, and uh, file sharing and stuff like that, um, all, all very, very powerful. Ooh, sorry. So what's uh, what's encouraged this adoption of these UCAS uh, solutions and, and contact center solutions? Well, first and foremost, obviously, there's like an awful lot of aging infrastructure, uh, lots of enterprises, had spent an awful lot of money on large Cisco-based, um, Cisco and Mitel and Shortel-based uh, um, servers, etc. And they're trying to like monetize, uh, make the most of the money they've spent there. But uh, obviously, a lot of that is awfully aged now. So they're like looking for what would they replace it with. At the same time, we've had a whole bunch of forces disrupting IT. Obviously. Um, more and more 
uh, folks are working uh, remotely um, and need to be mobile uh, in, in their jobs these days. Um, also, from a productivity perspective, uh, businesses are looking to integrate uh, their telephony with their workflows and their applications um, to just generate a, a more productive uh, business environment. And then finally, of course, um, each of us has a preference for how we would prefer to communicate with, with other folks, not only uh, internally within the business, but also externally outside the business. And obviously you have, you know, uh, as the uh, younger folks join the workforce, they're much more about messaging and so on and so forth, whereas us oldies are more interested in speaking to one another, et cetera. Um, so what's interesting, I, I guess, in, in that regard is um, uh, the the rollout of, you know, video-based calling and so on and so forth has really enriched uh, have really enriched the communications that happen between us all these days. And uh, I'm sure uh, the COVID-19 on the right here and, you know, the ability to uh, enable remote workers has really sort of highlighted how powerful uh, video uh, video calling, et cetera, is. And I know personally, uh, you know, I have uh, weekly um, calls internationally with family overseas and so on and so forth. And it's really enriched our, our whole sort of uh, um, communications fabric, both both on a business and a personal level. So USA, voice and data, what, what makes us the UCAS experts? Well, we're experts in a lot of technologies. You know, we focus on these eight sort of technology areas. And, um, you know, our entire uh, being is focused around providing advice on these uh, technology services, et cetera. Um, so we provide advisory services, we provide brokering services. We also provide implementation project management services, which help on the risk management uh, front as businesses move to new technology solutions. Obviously, they don't necessarily have any experience working with those solutions or any of those so solution providers because there's a lot of new entrants into the marketplace uh, uh, supporting new products and services within these categories. So uh, again, uh, this is stuff that we do every single day, uh, whereas obviously lots of our clients and their IT uh, uh, support folks uh, are more uh, buried in the trenches of running their day-to-day -day business and don't get the opportunity to spend a lot of time evaluating uh, competing uh, services and providers. That's all we do. Uh, we like to think we're pretty good at it. We have relationships with all the leading UCAS and CCAS providers, and here's a uh, is just a sort of snapshot of a handful of them. Um, there are literally hundreds of different providers that we work with, and um, we've developed some uh, pretty uh, robust tools to help us really um, accelerate the analysis of which of these providers makes the best fit for, for each individual client that, that we work with. Um, so much so that obviously our engineers have developed these uh, proprietary uh, tools and matrices which allow us to filter um, based upon a client's particular um, infrastructure such as hey they you know we we use salesforce we use office 365 we use zendesk we use this we use that um, which of these platforms are fully integrated with with those applications so obviously uh, you know that's a big deal uh, as our as is what's the footprint of our clients uh, are they an international are they an international client uh, with offices overseas we want to make sure that the providers that we're recommending they take a look at um, have capabilities in 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 uh, whatever regions they're working in or have any intention of expanding into So with that, I want to just introduce Vonage and Scarlett here and um, let her uh, give you an idea of how Vonage has grown uh, and a bit more background on Vonage and how they've really evolved over the past like sort of five to 10 years from 
what was probably known more for being a consumer uh, UCAS solution. Um, so with that, over to you, Scarlett. Thank you. Sam, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction and overview on unified communications. Um, on behalf of uh, Charlie and myself and Vonage, we appreciate the time and having us here for this event. Um, today, what I'm going to walk through, I'll do just in a hopefully just a few quick slides, is give you just an overview of the Vonage technology stack. Who is Vonage? What are our capabilities? What are some of the differentiators? Um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Charlie. He's actually going to walk you through a quick demo and let you see the VBC platform so you can see it yourself. I think it's important as we're talking today that we, you know, we talk about the real life experiences. And you know, with COVID-19, you know, overnight businesses were asked to take vast workforces and turn those into remote workers. Something that analysts thought might take another 10 years to really happen was forced into a matter of weeks and Vonage was here to assist. So we'll talk a little bit today as well about how we were able to support our customers throughout this digital transformation. The worldwide crisis does come at a time where I've never been more sure about our business, about our success. Because of the flexibility of our platform and just the nature of our services, Vonage was able to keep all of our business employees up and running smoothly while assisting our customers through that. What you see here is that we're a $1.2 billion global enterprise. We're the largest and most profitable cloud communications provider, and we're in a really strong position to kind of weather this climate, even if it should continue. Um, if you wanna go to the next slide for me, what you see today is that we are a business software company powering the future of communications. As you referenced, we've been doing this a really long time. We started in 2001 as that residential VoIP provider. We made the pivot to business services back in 2013 with the goal of being that most flexible cloud communications platform. We knew that in order to do that, we had to own our entire intellectual property, all of the technology stack from end to end. We had to make something that was flexible and scalable. And so we have done that. And what we have today is really the only company in the, in the business that can say we're the most flexible, we own our technology stack. You can go to the next slide. Um, what I'll talk about is, you know, Vonage has had an emphasis <clears throat> on overall experience. When we work with our customers, what we're looking at is how can we benefit them today and tomorrow? How do we impact their business outcomes? How do we help them provide a better experience to their customers? We have a support model. It's called PX360. That's pre Free, uh, customer and partner support 360 degrees. What we're really looking at is a holistic alignment of resources so that we can work with our business customers through their challenges. One of the main ways that we're doing that today is by helping the customers transition to that remote workforce. Um, and what we're doing is just aligning the right resources. On the front end, those are solutions engineers. We have a professional services team. We were looking we work alongside our customers and our partners to really get the solution implemented. At the height of COVID-19, we were looking, we were activating accounts within 48 hours. So we were able to take customers and immediately transition them. So one way we do that is by collaborating and working together throughout the implementation process. Um, one, if you go to the next slide, and, well, uh, and stop me at any time if you have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah let me just throw out, you know, one of the things um, which was, you know, as, as somebody who works with a lot of different providers, I, you know, one of the things I really notice is, you know, uh, Vonage isn't uh, there about just replacing a phone system. They really, you know, uh, want, one of their, their goals is really to transform how uh, businesses uh, communicate, both internally and externally with their clients and how and how, by changing how they communicate, it can really differentiate uh, differentiate them from the, from their peers, etc. So you know that's you know that that's kind of like a, a pretty refreshing refreshing um, approach. Uh, when I bring Vonage in, I know they're they're not there just to replace a phone system. They're there to like actually help uh, a, a business transform transform themselves, right? So I think you know that's just a, an important sort of differentiator. 
Appreciate that, Sam. And to your point, we stay with the customer from pre-sales to professional dedicated resources during implementation. And then at post implementation, we have dedicated customer success managers. They're there with the customer through QBRs throughout the life cycle. So as we work with them, we can layer on additional technologies. So that's really what you're seeing here is how we've architected and deployed the Vonage technology stack. There's really three key components. Those are our unified communications and contact center application. And then underneath that, you'll see our communications APIs. So customers with Vonage today can buy an enterprise grade unified communications or contact center application that out of the box is built on a global carrier network. We offer a global footprint. It's meant for public cloud consumption and we back it with a 5.9 service level agreement, right? On top of that, we have our programmable communications APIs. Go back just a little bit. Okay. Sorry, you're, no, you're fine. The programmable communications APIs, we could spend a ton of time talking about them, but think of them about flexible ways to add additional communication channels, whether you're looking at SMS, text, email, chat, um, social media, you can add them to RUC and contact center applications. You can layer them on top of your own custom applications. Customers don't have to think, do I buy or do I build? With Vonage, we give you really the best of both worlds, and we start talking about really what is the art of the possible? What's your desired business? business outcome, what are you doing differently, and then how do we integrate into those existing workflows to really increase productivity and do things that are unique to that organization. You can skip ahead now. So I really like this slide. This is probably my favorite slide. I think it's just a more elegant overview of how we really uh, designed, again, once again, designed um, and deployed our services. So if you start at the bottom, that's the Vonage Global Carrier Network. We're direct peering with all of the you know, major telcos across the world to deliver the telephony services. On top of that, we have a micro architecture, uh, micro architecture services within um, AWS. So we're global, we're all over, we're redundant. And on top of that, if you look at just our unified communications, what Charlie's going to show you later, we lovingly call ABC. Why? It's Vonage Business Cloud. We're in an industry that loves acronyms. And really, there's two, you know, as you mentioned, there's telephony, there's presence, there's collaboration services. But we're also offering some unique features within the VBC application itself. One of those is the Vonage Meetings. That's our own collaboration tool that's built on our technology stack, leveraging our video and voice APIs. Um, and that enables internal and external instant collaboration. It's secure video and voice communication. There's no troublesome downloads for external users. So it's a great collaboration tool. Charlie will show you more here in just a second. The other piece that I think is really important that you'll see starting to the left and going over the top is the Vonage integration suite. We call it the Vonage integration platform because it's also built on open API. So other third party entities can also integrate with us. But what we're giving you is out of the box, these pre-built pre integrations, deep integrations, native integrations into Salesforce, G Suite, Teams, 365, Dynamics, Hub Suite. It goes on and on. There's several more that are not listed here. What we're doing is helping you to increase productivity, increase adoption, right? We're automating tasks. So it's a click, click to, not only click to dials, but screen pops. You're able to um, get the most of your investment, get better uh, data to your BI tools. So really a, a, a neat available feature that you can get with Vonage right away. So if we just stay on this slide for a quick second, again in the middle, we have our programmable communications API platform. So that again integrates with any of our other product sets. And then also to the right, fully integrated with our unified communications is our contact center offerings. Our partners and our customers have challenges here. Our focus is to say CRM centric. So we have deep integrations with Salesforce. We just released Vonage Contact Center for ServiceNow and already on the product roadmap is Vonage Contact Center for Microsoft Dynamics. So as you know, we're focused on those deep integrations and getting the most out of business productivity tools that customers have already made investments into. Um, yep, that's it for this one. So this is out of all of that, this is kind of the what do you get, right? Um, with, with all of that, we give you the single stack, right? We're your single source communications provider. We own everything. It's our proprietary tools that makes us really flexible, nimble. We can fix stuff. We can add solutions. And we give you the 99.999% service level agreement. 
Um, I think the next few slides can go forward. Yep, this is another, just here's some additional, you'll see on the bottom, all of the pre-built integrations. We also work with Zapier, so there's thousands of others that we can integrate to, but these are the deep um, integrations that you'll see. And then again, um, you can add on. So we have smart numbers, which are programmable phone numbers that you can integrate into your VBC that can do a number of different things, leveraging our API tools. Um, and then we also have an app center. So there's third-party applications that are already integrated into VBC that you can leverage instantly through the uh, Unified Communications platform. And you can go forward. Charlotte, Charlotte, can you just touch on smart numbers? Give us an example of you know what what that really is. Yes, Char actually I'll pivot because smart numbers can do a lot of different things. Would you mind if we hold that and Charlie, you can take that um, right before the, um, the the start of the demo? Sure. Cool. Perfect. Is that okay, okay Sam? Sure. Awesome. Um, you can slide past this, just a snapshot. Um, what does it look like from a customer perspective? Charlie's gonna show you this as well. So we could skip this slide in the interest of time. Um, so yeah, the API platform, we could talk a really long time about what does what open API enable. Um, we have some great use cases for Uber, Lyft, Airbnb. If you've been to the airport and you get the flight notifications, those are all some great stories on what does what does an open API do. Some others are for health uh, for healthcare. A big focus, especially during COVID, has been telemedicine. So we enable uh, telemedicine telehealthcare solutions for a number of our clients and customers. For banks and finances, you might think of things like two-factor authentication. For schools or education or, or, or others, you think of mass notifications or dispatches. So lots of uh, things that we could certainly cover on another time, but I wanted to make sure that we talked about it here. So you can go ahead, Sam. Um, to reinforce the contact center, we started, we've been working with Bondage Contact Center for Salesforce for about 13 years. We're proud to say that we're number one in the Salesforce eco ecosystem, number one on their app exchange with over 745 star customer reviews. And we power over $1.5 billion in interactions with Salesforce. Um, again, I mentioned ServiceNow was the most recent product offering that we've launched for our contact center. So we're going to continue to make enhancements um, and again, fully integrated with the UC solution. I think this is the last one that I have, Sam. Um, so before I turn it over, I think was there a last slide before I turn it over to Charlie. I think that was it. But um, I, you know, I I just want to like that's pretty in, in, impressive. Like the the number one app exchange you, for user reviews, etc. Um, and you know, specifically for contact center as well. I mean, when you think about uh, you know the contact center, everyone's heard of nice in contact, etc. Obviously, Vonage used to partner with uh with uh, nice in contact etc before they uh, purchased their own uh, and and uh bought their own platform to bear so i think it's pretty impressive to uh to a see the these ratings and so on and so forth for your contact center and i think and i i know i don't want to spend too much time on it because this is um unified communications focus but the the reason why is because we focus on the customer experience what can we deliver and when you're when you work within sales there's so much customization that can be done within salesforce we also enable that customization to pass through to our contact center so we're one of the only ones that can do some custom object routing to really pull out the power of uh, the data there all right cool well let me just uh, i've got to find charlie so i can make him uh, the presenter <laughs> it's quite a long list here uh, <laughs> <I'm> here. <laughs> where are you charlie <laughs> under c yeah who did it oh here we go there you go I they were alpha bingo make presenter there you go charlie you're you're up You want to share your screen? Oh, Lord, tell me I didn't just drop the internet. No, you're still here. You can it, see you again. All right, I am the presenter. Mm -hmm. Work from home challenges uh, continue. <laughs> uh huh. 
Well, that was frozen in time. Okay. Yeah, Charlie, we can't we can't hear you. Maybe you want to turn your video off. If you got bandwidth problems. Well, while we're waiting for Charlie, uh, Scarlett, do you want to just talk a bit more about uh, those smart numbers? Or uh... yes, yeah, so the smart numbers are a way to enable any like your main number on your phone as a programmable into a programmable API. So, for example, you use Calendly. You could enable, you could configure an API. So, your main number. If someone calls your extension and you're on the phone, it can automatically look into your calendars or notice your presence one see that you're busy and then give the customer a number of different options it could look into your calendar and say looks like you know caller the person you've dialed is busy uh, would you like me to check their calendar to see their next available time they can say yes and then goes into your calendar says that you're available the next window and then asks if they would like to schedule a meeting or a callback so that's one example of what a programmable number could do and there's certainly lots of other integrations. Cool. Well, Charlie, we can see your screen now. Can we hear yeah. you? I'm back. And yeah, I'm so sorry about that. I've been there, a little brief interruption of my network, I guess. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can all see my screen now. And what we're looking at here is our VBC, Vonage Business Communications application, right, or client. So you know, with our seat license, which we call an extension, you can have a couple of phones, the example I give, one at work, one at home. <laughs> we all need a phone at home these days. Um, turn off webcams, okay. Um, and in addition to that, right, we've got the client or the app, which you can put on your cell phone, which is Android, uh, iOS, um, Mac, and PC, right? So I think the value, what I think of as the value of this solution really lies inside this application. Um, Sure, you can have a phone. A lot of times I, I demo this product and people go, can I have a phone? <laughs> and I always go, yes, yes, yes. You can have more than one phone, right? All associated with the same in license. But, right, the, the power is really in the client. So, I mean, I'm going to blow through here, but I wanted to just show as an immediate, you know, the first thing is that with every call that we put in and out um, from this solution, and I know Scarlett talked about screen pops. Well, that's so old school, right? We don't need to pop a screen because you've got our client up and we've got what you might want to pop right inside the client now. So what we're really aiming towards now is single pane of glass. Uh, that is a concept that we're pushing. You know, we talked about the contact center for Salesforce. One of the reasons why it's so popular is because we embed telephony inside the Salesforce um, solution for your agents. Uh, so when they're working, making and taking calls or whatever that might be, they don't have to leave Salesforce. Well, in the same sense, we've enabled our, sing our you know, client, our application, also as a single pane of glass with Salesforce embedded in it, right? So sort of choose how you prefer to work, you know, what you prefer to see. But the amazing piece of this is we can embed anything out of Salesforce that anyone might want to see. In this case, uh, no pun intended, I just pulled up a case. But actually, if I start this over and I go into Salesforce, you can see here I've got asset, case, order, task. Uh, and, and that's just a small you know, subset of all of the layouts, if you're familiar with Salesforce terminology, that I could bring across from Salesforce and embed inside of our client. Um, and not only that, right? So I just use case because not only can I embed, you know, the, the layout out of Salesforce, but I can actually customize that view and not just for all my agents, for, you know, individual groups of agents. So I might have one group of agents that wants to see, you know, a specific subset of, you know, cases and another that wants to see something else. So I, in fact, have two subsets uh, you know, or, or two layouts out of Salesforce that I'm dropping in here. We can completely customize this view literally by agent, right? So you're seeing I'm flipping back and forth from my default view to a custom case view that I created. 
you know, that has more information in it. If I go in here and I just type in Jen, this is Jen Point, that's an account. That account is being pulled right out of Salesforce. I'm not, you know, this is read write. And I could, you know, on this little up arrow here, jump right into Salesforce and actually work out of Salesforce directly. But the idea is that you're keeping your agents, you know, making them really productive, bringing everything in here. Not only that, but we can automate this so that every time you get a call, we generate a case, right? So there is so much customization capabilities in this just one piece of this solution. And this again uh, is our integration suite. So I wanted to show it to you. Salesforce is just an example, Zendesk, Zoho, HubSpot, um, Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, we've got about 15 of these pre-built you know, integrations. Um, as well as so CRM solutions, customer resource management solutions, as well as business productivity suite. So I could do the same thing in Gmail or Outlook, right? Office 365, where I can create actually calendar events. Um, and this is all based on what we're supplying, uh, which is the caller metadata, who the caller was, their phone number, when they called, how long that call lasted inbound, outbound. So kind of a piece of information that we start with and then what you can do with it. And, and there really is literally almost no end to what you can do. Um, last so but not Charlie, least on so, that, so, yeah, go so ahead. So Charlie, this, and again, for, for some folks, they, they might not even expect to see this, but this is like, this is just within your v, VBC platform. It's not in it's not in your CCAS platform, right? This is just- Yes, regular. this is VBC with that integration suite, which uh, that was one of the acquisitions Again, that Scarlett mentioned it was a company called G Unify. So they did, you know, UCAS integrations into Google, and we took that that company, turned it into a division, and they've just been churning out, you know, integrations into back office systems, CRM solutions, and business productivity. So yeah, uh, this is all inside of VBC. We're looking at our client. I can just jump, you know, immediately back to my calls list and see calls. Right? These are all my inbound, outbound calls, missed calls call recordings, you know, is another capability that we have right here. But so yeah, you, these are all just my calls. And this is, again, we are um, pulling in an iframe, if you're familiar with the term, from the related back office solution so that your agents can just stay inside of this single pane of glass. Right. And so so uh, if somebody were to call me and they were a contact in one of my accounts in Salesforce, I could basically just log a call to that particular contact or to that opportunity or to that account. Exactly. Right. So yep. I, again, this is sort of things that lo lots of folks are used to, you know, oh, this is kind of like contact center capability, but you're actually offering it with, with the basic VBC thing, right? You know, it's kind of like, wow. Yeah, not only that, but we, you know, and I'm going to show you in a minute, right? It is not quite released. We're just doing it in beta now, but we've got several customers using it. Single pane of glass where we have the agent, what we call the contact pad, also embedded here. So as an agent, you know, you're setting yourself in state, right? Like I'm, I'm at lunch, I'm on break, I'm in training, right? I, you know, taking calls, conferencing those calls, all within, again, this single pane of glass. So yes, I can extend this to an agent, right? This could just be a salesperson here, but I can also bring in a um, our express or elevate contact center solutions here as well. And I'll show you just briefly before I, I wrap this up what that looks like as well. Cool. So voicemail is pretty straightforward here, right? We do uh, have uh, voicemail transcription. Um, if interested, that's an optional feature, but it doesn't cost much. We can do that by um, client, by seat license. Uh, SMS, you mentioned earlier, right? Text capability. So we've got full-blown text capability out of here. Um, typically, if I'm doing a demonstration, I send, you know, I shoot somebody a text. It is so quick, uh, you get it in just a few seconds. And I mean, not five or 10 seconds. I mean, like two or three seconds. Um, this, again, is one of our uh, acquisitions, right? We bought a company called Nexmo. They compete with Twilio, uh, much more international, much more fully flavored, part of our API division now. But, you know, they brought in this text capability. So we own, again, this um, uh, intellectual property, as Scarlett put it earlier. 
and we have the ability to, to you know send and receive text right to you know straight out of your uh, local DID. But wait, there's more. I'm the but wait, there's more guy. We can also take you know send text in and out of what we call the virtual receptionist. So you know think of virtual reception as kind of the you know an auto attendant people call they get your main number you know they can and then they can take action from there what if we could bring in text to a main number right a departmental number or whatever you know whatever it might be um, in fact this was invented or you know conceived when one day somebody went looking at all the text we were receiving right onto our platform and realized that there was this huge you know amount of text that had never been delivered why they were going to people's main numbers right and <laughs> the main number was going to our you know main number auto attendant or virtual receptionist as we call it so they said hey aha the light bulb went on why don't we deliver those you know we'll call it the business inbox so you can send and receive text to a you know a business inbox you can assign that business inbox out to a group of people and the example that i give on this is think about human resources right all you you know you've got all these applicants you know they're just changing all the time you've got people always applying for jobs um, and you got two or three people working in the HR department and old school is right I've just got my cell phone and I'm texting you back and forth because nobody wants to talk on the phone anymore right uh, I go out sick I go on vacation I quit and all of that you know back and forth all that information is gone right for that a period of time or forever how about if we could bring it all into the business where it's completely visible and I think I could show you just you know an example of that if I look at some of Ronnie's, uh, you know, stuff. So this goes all the way back to July of last year. We'll keep this for you for a year. But this is a business inbox. These are just transactions that we were having with Ronnie Wadsworth. Um, and again, you've got a group of people that could administrate this. So you can share this business inbox out to, you know, in our case, human resources, three people say, and everybody can respond, can go back and forth on those text messages. Um, but wait, there's more as well with the business inbox, we can actually bring in Facebook messages. So you can link this to your Facebook account. And again, rather than giving, you know, your marketing people, right, uh, you know, a group of two or three people administrative rights into your Facebook account and having them in there, you know, messing around with stuff. How about we just bring everything into, again, this business inbox. And if you get a message from Facebook, somebody, you know, it just shows up in everybody's client that's associated with that business inbox. So, and, and you're seeing there on the right hand side underneath your name there, via Facebook there, Charlie. So they know really what, they know what sort of channel this uh, message came from, whether it came from like a Facebook channel or whether it came from a, just a regular SMS text or, or whatever, right? Exactly, there you have it. You can see the little F on there indicating mm -hmm. this is a Facebook message. Huh. So yeah, very powerful feature. We're really proud of it. Internally, you know, um, beyond just external text capabilities, we have the ability to chat or message, whatever you want to call it. So that can be one-to-one. -one. I use it a lot or one-to-many. As you can see here, Sarah is on a call. So I've got this little green phone icon there, but I can just shoot her a message. Um, or, uh, you know, in fact, for her or anyone else, I can actually just, uh, drag and drop, um, that's the only thing I've got here, I can actually just drag and drop files in, right? So I can send files this way too. Uh, so very easy to just shoot her a file, like, you know, here's a CSV file, sure. Sarah, there you have it, right? So we can, you know, I'm on the phone with somebody and I need a little back office information. You know, we can just chat back and forth, shoot some files back and forth, um, not just one to one, but many to many. So in this case, I've got a whole group here I'll shoot back up again to the top, right? And again, I can drop any kind of file in here. This goes back to July. Uh, you know, you can see I was hired roughly a year ago. Started building all this out uh, in my demo instance. But any file, anything, it's all saved. It's all persistent. If you had, um, and I didn't give this example, but you know, I have this application on my work desk, my laptop from work, uh, my desktop at home. I've got it on my iPhone. And I've got this, anything I do anywhere shows up on all of those instances, right? So it's and, persistent across. And and all, everything that's in in any of these things is searchable from just a, at the top there. So I could type in bookmarks and it would highlight it or? 
You know, I'm, I've thought about that before, and I don't really have the search capability on this, um, but it's pretty easy to get through it. I do not have search capability, no. Okay. I wish I could say I did. You can over here search for, you know, uh, Sarah or Charlie, those kinds of things, so I can narrow down on their conversations, right? But I don't have the ability to search the conversation directly. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out, Sam. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but I, I will add that. I mean, one of the great things here is that we can take everything back to our developers, as Scarlett was saying earlier, right? We own all of this intellectual property. So when we have a good idea, we take it back and we put it in development. One of the things I like to show is just the level of development that's going into this product. Because every time I look at it, <clears throat> here we go. I hadn't seen this one. Three days ago, a new version came out. A few weeks before that, a new version. A few weeks before that, new version. A few weeks before that, new version, new version. You can see the level of development, you know, R&D that's going into this product. And again, this is just this application. This isn't anything to do with back office. So um, thank you for that insight, Scarlett. Hopefully you noted that and we could take that and yeah. put it onto our list for development. And I think Charlie, what's a good point is when we see all these updates, you see there was updates every two weeks. Can we talk through how easy it is to just update and re hit the refresh button? I think that's important. Oh, yeah. Well, typically when you log in, right, you just have an update, but if you want to you know, look and see if there is an update, you can just go right over here, check to see if there's an update. And then if there is, it takes you know less than a minute. Um, to just run that update and then you've got the new version. And again, if you, you know, we have some customers that are concerned, they don't want their end users to have that capability, you know, we can also, you know, make it so that they're unable to do that as well. Um, what else do I want to show, right? We've got full eFax capabilities, end user or otherwise, call recording capabilities. We looked at the rest of this. Um, We've got Receptionist Console, which is really nice. This is a, another product that we've developed internally. Um, so a lot of our competitors use third-party soft consoles, as you might call them. Here we've got a full-featured, full-flavored Receptionist Console, drag-and-drop capabilities, all kinds of great stuff on here. Again, I can see Sarah's on that call. I didn't talk about meetings. We've got a full-blown, and again, this comes from another one of our acquisitions, um, video conference solution comes with every seat license. So you could do, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 16 uh, video and 100 voice participants. Uh, and every end user has the ability to do that. We've got an add on for Google Calendar. We are developing a plugin for Outlook um, to where you could, you know, when you open a, a Google, you know, when you do a Google invite, you can just drop this meeting in there. Otherwise, you know, what we tell people to do is just go copy your meeting, right? Because this is an individual pin for each end user. They can just copy this and then do their meetings there. We can do screen share out of this. Uh, I don't have recordings here. Um, you know, you capture all the details of every meeting you might have. Again, this is my demo instance, so I don't have a recording here. I can, I've got a, a recording on another one. Um, but it, you can record, you can do screen share, just like you, we're doing here and now um, using uh, this solution. So everything that you would expect out of a video conferencing solution like Zoom, you know, or a Zoom meeting as everyone's calling them now, um, we've got that and it comes with every seat license. So let me just take a couple more minutes. I wanna just jump over to another instance and show you one more little thing here. <clears throat> Thank you. And that would be a recording on that meeting. I think I've got some over here. I could show you that real briefly. And then um, the single pane of glass I was talking about. So here are some recordings, or at least a recording. So I mean, I could play this here. You know, here it is. I can just jump through it. I don't know if that's, whoops, <laughs> it starts talking out, right? I can download that and share it out from here. Um, so again, a full featured recording and everything is captured all in here. Um, I was doing a bunch of recordings on this instance. Um, the call dashboard, we can give this to every end user. And again, uh, this is an easy way. I can still see that Sarah's on that call. So uh, this is for every end user. They can see what's going on in their organization, which I think is a real nice feature. And last but not least is our ability to embed our contact center solution inside of this single pane of glass as well. So this is actually an agent now. 
and it takes a minute or so to log into my contact center solution, but I'll just show you briefly um, what we've got there. Um, and I really didn't get to the admin side of this, but I think my time is up. Let's see if we get logged in over here. Here we go. Um, but you'll see this contact pad, again, as I spoke to earlier, the ability to put myself in call states or non-call states, non-ready states. You know, here I'll just say I'm at lunch. Um, and a lot of feature functionality coming out of our contact center solution. But again, if I'm here, I'm a contact center agent. I can make calls, take calls. I can um, consult with not only other agents, but the back office. This really differentiates our solution now because, you know, if you're an in-contact, you can only talk to other in-contact agents out of in-contact. We can share you out. You can, you know, obviously confer with everyone in your back office. But again, I can work on all anything in my CRM back office solution. I can be a contact center agent and I can have all the full functionality that I need um, of my regular Vonage business communications client. So Charlie, obviously you're showing us the soft phone on your uh, laptop today. Uh, you wanna just, are you able to throw up the, the same app on your uh, smartphone? Can you Can you do that? I could do it if you want to give me just a few seconds to get that going. Sure. And in um, the meantime, yeah, go ahead. Anyone's got any questions that they or about functionality? Throw them out. This is the perfect time to do so. I've stunned them into silence. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just wild them. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm, yeah, I thought about maybe showing the client, and it just takes a second for this to, here we go. Let's try this again. We're almost there. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I did something to show our smart WAN solution and that takes it off the same network. I have to move networks. That's not going to happen. My okay. apologies. Um, no essentially, it's the same. It, you know, it, the functionality is a little bit different, but all of the features are there, right? But how you um, navigate looks a little bit different, but it's, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, I'm so sorry because when I plug into my smart WAN device to demonstrate how um, we can give you that 5.9 um, SLA, uh, it takes my phone off the same network as my PC, and if I do that, I can't mirror. So right. my apologies there. No problem. Um, yeah, and obviously that's another differentiator for Vonage. They do offer an SD-WAN solution. Uh, they call it Smart WAN, uh, but basically it's a Velo cloud-based solution, right, Charlie? Mm -hmm, that's exactly right. So um, obviously lots of folks moving to a UCAS solution from a more traditional PRI or or, or SIP, SIP trunking premise-based solution. Um, they're used to having uh, their core quality managed in a slightly different manner. And, and obviously with everything moving to the cloud, SD-WAN has become like the uh, silver bullet for managing quality of experience across all your applications, not just your voice. And, and Vonage um, have, uh, have basically uh, taken that on as like, hey, Core cool quality is is absolutely paramount for our our clients' experience. So they do uh, actually uh, uh, provide SD WAN services in in conjunction with their with their UCAS and CCAS platform. So uh, that's that's a, a differentiator. Uh, save, saves uh, another bill from another provider and, and uh, any finger pointing, etc. So with that. I think maybe I will uh, resume um, and take back control here and make presenter for oh, one second. Charlie, thanks so much. That was awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. So um, let's just get into wrap up mode. Uh, wrong way. So key uh, UCAS solution takeaways, uh, for me, the, the, 
UCAS is is here. Um, obviously, the most recent the most recent uh, everyone working from home as a, a result of COVID has just further reinforced that. Um, and when you take a look at all those premise based phone systems, etc., they've all either gone bankrupt or they've consolidated. But even those providers that used to sell uh, premise based solutions have all basically morphed into uh, providing uh, cloud based solutions. Um, the adoption is totally mainstream and adoption rates obviously are ridiculously high right now as a result of COVID and everyone's a bit, uh, needing to work remotely. Um, one thing is, is totally clear, um, there's an awful lot of providers out there, um, so it's important you pick your provider very carefully. There's hundreds of them and each and every one of them has different capabilities. So obviously we've seen uh, we've seen Vonage's capabilities today, uh, definitely uh, pretty differentiated, um, but uh, equally there are some other great providers out there. So um, what USA Voice and Data recommends is um, have a give us a call. We can help you evaluate your requirements. Sometimes uh, lots of our clients find it difficult to pinpoint their requirements because they don't know what they don't know. Um, and because we do this every day, we're very good at pinpointing those requirements and then we can leverage our tools to match those requirements with uh, leading providers. So uh, we have built interactive quick assessment uh, tools uh, which allow us to gather some basic information about your business your goals, your priorities, your uh, your uh, applications that you use today, and so on and so forth, um, and then uh, reach out to us. Um, we're happy to uh, run you through uh, uh, an evaluation process. It doesn't cost you a dime, and uh, it can really accelerate your evaluation process. Um, with that, I'd just like to, again, thank uh, Scott and Charlie for their, their time today. Any questions, folks, um, would be more than welcome now. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up here and um, we will be sending out a link to the recording. So if there are anything that came across and we may have skipped through really quickly and you want to uh, take a look at it again, or maybe there are other folks in your organizations who you think this might be uh, interesting uh, to, um, feel free to forward that recording on or the link to the recording on. And with that, I am just going to wrap up. Um, and uh, again, thank you for your time today. Thank you.